I'm going to show you how to build an API gateway for your microservices. This is a component that acts like a reverse proxy for your microservices system and it handles authentication, request routing, caching and much more. Let's see how to build it. We have a system with three services, the users API, the sales API and the product API and all of them are deployed as individual services. I'm using a Docker Compose project to orchestrate these services. Each service is exposed on a different port and all of them have a separate physical database running inside of Docker. The microservices and the databases all belong to the same network inside of our Docker containers. So let's see how our system functions at the moment without an API gateway. We have to talk to three different APIs all exposed on different addresses to implement our business use cases. So for example, I have a post request to the port 5100 where the user's API is exposed and when I send this request I get back a new user. I can fetch this user from the database by sending a GET request using this identifier and I'm going to get back a response. I can also do the same with the product API which is on the port 5300. When I send a POST request I can create a product or I can view the list of existing products by calling the GET endpoint. And finally once I have my user and the products created I can make a sale for this user identifier and the product IDs that I want to purchase and when I send this request I'm going to get back a new sales instance. This is using the sales API which is on the port 5200 and if I send a GET request with the user's identifier I'm going to get the list of their sales. So the client calling our API has to work with three different services they are all working on different addresses. It also needs to think about authentication for each of the services and this increases complexity. It also makes it harder for you to introduce new services or merge existing services together without introducing breaking changes on your client. So how can we make this better? Instead of letting your clients call your microservices individually, you can place another component in front of your microservices. This is called a reverse proxy, or in our case, this is going to be our API gateway, and the gateway will be responsible for taking in incoming requests and then routing the request to the respective service that is supposed to handle it. It's then going to get a response back from the service and return that to the client. As far as the client is concerned, there's only one backend, which is the API gateway, which also makes the gateway a bottleneck in your system, but you can run the gateway in a highly available setup to mitigate for this. So now I'm going to show you how to implement an API gateway for your microservices in .NET. I'm going to add a new solution folder that's going to hold my gateway and let's create another .NET Core application inside. I'm going to create a new project. I'll choose the ASP.NET Core Web API and I'm going to call it Gateway API. I'm going to use .NET 8 and I'm going to enable Docker running on Linux. So let's create our boilerplate API that I'm going to immediately clean up of all the unnecessary things, mainly the weather forecast endpoint and the comments. The next thing I'm going to do is to add our Gateway API to the Docker Compose orchestrator. So I'm going to say add container orchestrator support, Docker Compose, and then that's going to introduce my API gateway service in our Docker Compose file. And you can see the API gateway here. I'm going to move it at the top to make it more visible. And I'm going to expose it on a specific set of ports and also add it to the same network that all of the other services are running in. So let's expose the gateway on the ports 5000 for HTTP and 5001 for HTTPS. Now that we have the gateway service configured inside of the same network that all of the other services are running in, we can go back to the gateway API and see how to introduce a reverse proxy or an API gateway. I'm going to add a new library that's called YARP. YARP stands as yet another reverse proxy and it's a level seven proxy, which means it works on the application layer. And it's amazing how simple it is to integrate YARP into your .NET project. All I have to do is add the YARP services. So I need to say add reverse proxy. Then I can load my configuration for my downstream services, which are going to be our free individual APIs. And I'm going to load this from my configuration settings. So I'll say builder configuration, get section, 
and I'm going to load it from the reverse proxy section. And then the next thing I need to do is to map the Yarp middleware by calling map reverse proxy. This is all the setup I need to configure a .NET Core Web API to work as a reverse proxy. The only thing that we are missing is the reverse proxy configuration. So let's move into our app settings JSON file and start building out the reverse proxy section. There are two high level parts that I need to define. The first one is the routes, which are going to represent the routes that I want to handle on the reverse proxy. And then I can configure how I'm going to route those requests to the downstream services. The next component are the downstream services and this is going to live inside of the clusters section. So let's start by defining our first cluster, which is going to represent our users API. So I'll call it the users cluster, and I'm going to configure the address for my users API inside of the destinations section. This section supports defining multiple destinations. So let's define the destination one as the first one that we have, and I need to define the address field that's going to point to my users API. Now, what I'm going to do here is to target the internal port inside of Docker, which is users API 5100. So how did I get to this? If I go back to my Docker compose, here is the internal name for my users API container. And you can see that the HTTP port is 5100. So that's how I'm coming up with this address. What is really cool is that you can easily implement load balancing here by just defining another set of addresses. So let's say this is destination two and three. And for example, they are running on slightly different ports. And then I just need to spin up two additional services on these ports and Yarf will be able to load balance between them. But let's leave it like this with just one downstream API and let's configure our API routes. I also need to give this route a name. So let's call it the users route and I need to assign it to a cluster. We just define this cluster and we're going to assign it using the cluster ID property. So I'm going to say this belongs to the users cluster and now Yarp knows what is the downstream address that is going to proxy the requests to. We need to tell Yarp how to match requests that are supposed to go to this service and I'm going to introduce a prefix such as users API to represent the endpoints on my proxy. And then I'm going to define a catch all variable that's just going to catch anything that comes after users API and the route. But if I just proxy this request using this route to the downstream API, it's going to run into an exception because a route like this doesn't exist. So what I have to do is also define a transform section. And then inside of it, I can define a path pattern, which is going to tell Yarp how it's going to transform the route that's coming into the reverse proxy to the one that will be sent to the user's API. And basically what I'm doing here is converting a request that comes in to user's API slash something only into what comes after the slash after user's API, which is an existing endpoint on our user's API service. I know this was a lot to take in, so let's see an example of how this actually works. So here are all of the services running inside of Docker desktop. You can see the free API instances, the databases and our gateway API. All of them are running inside of the same network and with our reverse proxy configuration in place, we can start proxying the requests from our reverse proxy to the user's API. So let me show you how this works. The user's API is still running on the port 5100. And if I send a get request, you'll see that we get back a response but the reverse proxy is running on the port 5000. So I'm going to update this request to use this port and I have to use the route that I defined in my reverse proxy configuration, which is users API and then the rest of the route that will be proxied to the appropriate service. So now if I send this request, we're also going to get back the same response, except now we are using the reverse proxy. So if I send this a few more times, you'll see that we get back a response. And if I show you the logs for the gateway API service, you can see here how it's proxying the request to the user's API inside of the Docker network. And also notice how our route transformation is applied here. I can do the same for the post endpoint. So I'm just going to update the route here to match what we exposed on the reverse proxy. And when I send this request, we're going to get a new user. Now I can use this identifier to query the user with this new ID. If I try to do the same for my products, let's say I update this to 5,000, 
we expose this as products API slash products and I try to send this, we're going to get back a 404 not found because I never configured the products API as a downstream service. And another thing that's really cool about Yarp is that you can update your reverse proxy settings while the application is still running. So let's introduce the products route here, which is going to target the products cluster and is going to use the route of products API slash catch all. Then I need to define an appropriate cluster. So let's add the products cluster and it's going to have a downstream address of products API running on the port 5300. Now when I save the changes and open up my gateway API, you're going to see that we have this log here saying that the proxy data was loaded from configuration. So now if I go back to Postman and try to send this same request again, it's going to be correctly proxied to our downstream service. So let's do the same in the post endpoint where I'm going to create another product. So let's call this v3. We send this request and we get back a new product ID. Now, if I send the get request, you will see our new product appearing and we created this one using our gateway. Let's also do the same for the sales API. I'm going to start by creating another route. So let's call this the sales route. That's going to target the sales cluster and is going to use the sales API as the path. And then I need to define another cluster here. Let's call this the sales cluster that's going to target the sales API address on the port 5200. And now in Postman, if I update my GET request to the port 5000, which is our gateway, and we target the sales API slash sales route and send this, we're going to get back the existing sales for our user. And let's try to create a new sale using the same route and only purchasing our new product. So we're going to hit sales API slash sales the user ID is two and the product ID is 35. So I'm going to create a new sale. And when I hit get sales, we're going to get back our new purchase of the product with the ID of 35. And this fundamentally changes how clients consume our API. They can only talk to the reverse proxy, which is running on one port and they only need to take care of hitting the appropriate routes. And then the API gateway takes care of routing the request to the correct microservice. If you want to learn how to implement load balancing for your microservices, then take a look at this video next where I'm also using Yarp to implement this. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons and until next time, stay awesome.